Hello, good people. I hope you are fine and you have been enjoying the previous video on uh, short term decision making, where we say that uh, managers are not always going to be confronted with long term decisions. They are also supposed to come up with uh, viable solutions. Uh, I mean, meant to address uh, the current problems which the company is facing. All right. So we talked about the relevant costing and uh, the make or buy decisions. In this particular uh, video, we are going to expand the concept of short-term decision making by looking at risk and uncertainty. This is actually relevant uh, to students studying the ACA performance management exam or other management accounting uh, examination or qualification which one could be pursuing all right i believe that uh there are some people who agree with me that the definition of risk is actually uh the possibility possibility uh that uh, something is going to happen all right so this simply means that this is the chance or opportunity that something is going to happen and this something this something could be a loss some injury okay injury or uh, we'll be talking of some peril, right? These are all negative issues. I mean, negative events that can arise, but also risk can also mean the chance that we are going to be profitable, okay? It could also be uh, some profit, okay? Or some favorable uh, incident that can arise. So that's risk. But uh, because it is the it is a chance that something can happen. This chance can be measured, but in different ways. Okay, let's say we are investing, and um, there are, it's not always going to be some profit that is going to uh, be sustained. There is a possibility, or there is a chance that uh, we might make a loss. All right, or there might be some chance that we can be profitable, or we can just sustain an average performance. So, uh, in that case, we are not quite sure, all right, what is going to result or what we are going to achieve by the end of the day. If we ask uh, different analysts, they might say, if you take this particular course of action, you are going to, uh, we, you are likely to uh, be 10% uh, a loss maker, all right, 10% loss maker. Okay, and somebody might say, oh, you're going to be 70% uh, profit earner, okay? Which means there's, there is a 70% chance that you can, you can make a profit, but there are also a few who might say, oh, there is a 20% chance that you are going to earn an average profit, okay? So because of these differing views, it means that we are not certain, we are doubtful. So when you are talking of uncertainty, we are simply saying we have got some doubt. So uncertainty simply means doubt. Okay, or anything that comes short of certainty, that's uncertainty. We are not 100% sure that we are going to sustain this uh, particular result. So this. Uh, this concept or this concept of risk and uncertainty is usually merit as one okay and when you start risk you are you are by default studying uncertainty but does it mean that they are the same <clears throat> okay now with this background ladies and gentlemen let us talk of our uh, risk preference all right we understand that when people get into business they've got varying objectives but 
it is generally known that if a business is a profit i mean is a commercial one uh, or a profit seeker its uh, its main objective is to maximize profit all right so um let us um i mean continue with this subject matter with the view of a profit making enterprise or profit making organization all right now in this organization uh we expect to find different groups of investors all right some investors are called risk risk seekers all right a risk seeker is somebody who is actually interested in the best possible outcome no matter uh how small that uh i mean the chance or how small the risk that uh such a result might occur all right so he just want the best possible outcome no matter how scarce the chance is then we have got somebody who is called uh the middle of the road middle of the road investor okay middle of the road is middle of the road he is he's an, he doesn't want a loss he doesn't want a higher profit he just wants some average performance so he is a risk neutral investor lastly we have got what is called some risk avoider these guys they do not want uh to take too much risk okay they are sometimes called risk averse investors okay risk averse investors all right so a risk avoider makes decisions based on the worst possible outcome that could okay all right so we need to understand the different views or the different point of opinions of these investors as we try to map way forward when we are confronted with short term decision making situation so by the end of the uh, i mean for, uh, of this particular video we just have to ensure that at least these two uh, or three objectives should be uh, met we ne we need to know how to apply expected values okay expected values in a decision making context and then apply the uh techniques of max max okay <laughs> the max 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 mean and minimum regret to decision uh making problems okay and including the production of profit uh tables or payoff tables all right then lastly we should be able to draw a decision tree all right in a multi stage uh decision problem so those are the three main objectives of course we would, we would talk about uh this animal called perfect and imperfect information we'll talk about that as a concluding remark all right so uh there is uh this issue that we uh i mean that's usually confront business managers okay uh where they have to uh, make decisions based on the worst or the most likely or best outcome okay outcome estimates so here we need to look at these issues okay so the essence of this part of the lecture is that uh when we are evaluating a problem okay or the impact of the problem we have to look at three possible outcomes that can result right so we have to look at uh the most likely outcome okay what is the most um sorry there not mostly but most likely outcome Okay, most uh, likely outcome. All right, and then after we, uh, th this is usually considered the average outcome. The 
average. All right. Then we also have to worry about the worst outcome. Okay, the worst possible outcome. If we take this particular course of action, what is the worst possible outcome? Then lastly, we have to look at the best possible outcome. Given the circumstances, given all the resources we have, what is the best possible outcome? All right. Now, uh, when we are comparing, okay, when we are comparing the worst possible, the most likely, and best possible outcomes for different decision choices, all right, uh, this might assist us to come up with what is called uh, the profit table or payoff table. So we need to actually. Uh, talk about this particular payoff table all right uh, which is normally a, a payoff table is usually some matrix okay it is simply a table or matrix <coughs> okay where uh, we normally have uh, one side Okay, and one side of this particular table uh, with different, with different row, or did I just say column? Okay, row, column. All right, for uh, the eventuality. All right, for the eventual circumstance, which might arise. Okay, that's the first uh, point. Then, what else do we see in a um, uh, in a payoff table? Okay, we've got another side. Or the other side of this table has a column, has a column or row, okay, for the eventual. <clears throat> Um, not for this eventual actually. Uh, this is for for each of uh, for each of the uh, decision options. So another side of the table has a column for uh, for each uh, decision option. Okay. Excuse me. All right. So we have got one side of the table with different row or column for the eventual circumstance which might okay. All right. And then we have got. Uh, Another side of the table that has a column or row for each decision option. So this is our payoff table, let's say judgment, but we need to just uh, have a look at an example to send this point home. Kisinga Co is trying to set the sales price for one of its products. Three prices are under consideration and expected sales volumes and costs are as follows. Pricing choices, sales demand in a unit. Okay, so we are having uh, a 
a series of prices, okay? They've got different prices, the three of them, all right? At $4, the, pos the best possible outcome, okay, in terms of sales demand. The best possible demand which we can have is 16000 for this particular product, okay? But at $4 again, the most likely uh, demand is 14000 then the worst possible is 10000 at the price of 430 the best possible uh, demand is 14000 okay the most likely demand is 12500 while is the worst possible is 8000 lastly at 4040 the best possible uh, demand is 12500 uh, while is the most likely demand is 12,000 and worst possible demand is 6,000. Fixed costs are estimated at 20,000 while it's variable cost of sales are $2 per unit. Okay, we know uh, as I have indicated in the previous video that short-term decision making is usually linked to the principles of marginal costing. All right, so it is actually wise for you to compute the contribution beforehand all right when you have run out of time in the exam and you are asked things related to short-term decision making make sure that some way you have calculated the contribution because markers will, would easily see that maybe this student ran out of time so but he, he was uh, i mean understanding the concept so let us prepare a payoff table for the different possible outcomes for each decision options all right so um <clears throat> what is our contribution ladies and gentlemen from the information so far uh the contribution um is actually we know that contribution uh, let me just try to write it here. Contribution is equal to selling price minus variable cost per unit. Selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. And this selling price uh, at $4, the selling price, that's $4, right? Okay, $4 and the variable cost per unit is $2. So here, uh, the contribution is two dollars. All right, at four thirty, this means that uh, where the price is four thirty, the contribution is two thirty. Where the price is four forty, okay, the contribution is two forty. All right, so that's simple. That's simple. Okay. Okay, I think we need to uh, make our work a bit tighter by using some Excel. All right, so let us float together because in the exam, we are likely to use Excel. So um, we can just... Uh, create this payoff table okay from scratch payoff table all right and uh, we have got uh, three prizes ladies and gentlemen uh, we can say price per unit price per unit okay and we have our uh, first prize there right first price was four dollars all right um second one right um <clears throat> so just say four here all right we'll format four dollars it's fine then four thirty right Right, we format everything for dollars. Then the the, the second price is four forty. 
right and then we have got uh, the information which we want to compute in this case this is the variable cost all right the variable cost per unit we are told that it is two dollars okay and uh, because it is actually given the no need to worry okay don't worry let's just put this so that the examiners or the markers would see what we were doing right so this means that the contribution contribution is the difference all right so uh, we can make these cells uh, wider by just double click double clicking the this line this part this part okay as you have seen there all right and the issue now that has to be done is to format this information so that uh, the examiners will see that uh, they are dollars but you can do the formatting uh, in the last part okay yeah uh, but it is wiser to just uh, do your thing uh, while least everything has been formatted well all right okay all right we want this information here to be in dollars so go to just click at the dollar here right and everything is already in dollars all right and then we know the contribution is equal to variable call i mean selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit so say equal sign okay equal sign um this sale all right minus this one press enter and we get our um uh contribution okay and we can simply uh drag like that and we get our i mean the contributions for all the uh different uh prices okay um after we do that we then have to determine the total contribution according to the demand okay we know we have got uh different outcomes all right we've got different outcomes remember uh the we said that in the in our definition for the uh profit uh table all right if you still remember ladies and gentlemen uh when we discussed about this we said that uh we are going to have on the other side of the table where we have got uh different uh rows or columns for the eventual circumstance which may arise and the eventual circumstance which may arise is this this uh, best possible outcome most likely outcome and so forth uh, as you can see uh, in my table here all right uh, let me just enter them all right in my excel uh, we have this information the best uh possible demand the best possible demand okay the most likely most likely demand and then we have got uh the worst possible demand okay you, you mustn't show the examiners that you are good at typing uh, these or uh, presenting uh, I mean ultra super duper uh, spreadsheet presentation no the idea is actually to make the spreadsheet assist you in arriving at what you want to achieve all right so do not spend much of the time decorating the, your spreadsheet you just have to fly all right so uh, we now know we now need now to uh, input uh, our total contribution. So here we gonna say uh, total contributions, all right? And I'm sure we are agreeing 
that contribution simply means contribution towards fixed cost right so total contribution all right total contribution is best so uh, this uh, this column is actually let us just put these dollar signs here on top so that we our workings are not going to be bothersome okay but you can simply ignore since everything there has been formatted to dollars so let us work with the formatting available all right but let me just try to broaden this so that the examiners are not going to be confused you will see that we are now talking of total contribution my computer sometimes is worrisome all right so this is total contribution at each branch all right so we know according to the information uh we have here um uh, everything is based upon the demand at each uh, circumstance so for example at the price of four dollars the best possible demand is sixteen thousand all right so sixteen thousand we come to a table here and say um we say we go sign all right um we go sign sixteen thousand all right multiply by multiply by um the contribution okay the contribution at the price of four dollars all right we know the price of four dollars the contribution is this one all right and we just say uh enter you can see that there is a problem in terms of formatting okay and also in terms of um we did not put the last bracket okay so we then have to correct that or you can if you are happy you can call i mean accept the correction that has been given by excel all right in this case let us say we accept okay and you see we have determined our uh solution okay for the first contribution all right okay for the most likely at four dollars we have the demand of fourteen thousand so we come here again i mean we come here say uh equal sign all right uh fourteen thousand multiply by uh two dollars okay we proceed uh to this uh and say the worst possible outcome at four dollars was uh ten thousand right so that's the sign uh, 10,000 multiply by C. Okay, so we are moving. All right, let me just do the other one, and then um, you will have to pause the video and complete the table on your own. All right, okay here at four dollars thirty the best possible outcome was uh fourteen thousand okay so that's fourteen thousand uh it's fourteen thousand what how much yes fourteen thousand uh complete so that's fourteen thousand apply by two dollars thirty which is the contribution all right we get uh, our 32,200. So let me just complete everything for you. Okay, um, let's say, suppose uh, in the exam 
the contribution figure is a bit larger and to continue typing it back and forth you're going to may end up making errors and there won't be some advantage of using the spreadsheet after all okay so you just have to at least uh, format your payoff table to dollars okay because we have realized there in our first error that uh, the formatting was an issue so we can uh, format all the portions of the table because we really know that those are contributions so contribution is the money okay these are monetary contributions so we just have to come and uh, do the formatting for our table so everything now is now in dollars so if it is now in dollars it's, it's now uh, easier for us to do the manipulation so we say at this uh, the most likely demand at this level according to our data that is at 430 the most likely uh, demand there is uh, this one 12,500 so we say 12,500 multiply by uh, this uh, which has been our uh, contribution and we get that all right uh, then we come to this point and we say how much was your uh, demand the worst possible demand at 430 uh, at 430 this was 8000 so we say 8000 multiply by uh this cell again okay and we have to get our eighteen thousand four hundred okay let's do the last column together again we go sign okay uh the uh, the best possible demand at the last price of 440 was twelve thousand five hundred came apply by the contribution of 240 okay but this time we said we no longer want to type anything to avoid errors okay so voila we are there and then we do uh it again here what was the demand at uh, the most likely demand at 440 it was 12,000 okay and we say we don't want to type anymore so get our values we move on because remember in the exam you just have to fly so that's the worst possible outcome is six thousand in terms of demand all right I'm apply by the contribution per unit and we said we no longer want to type anything Shwala, we are there okay ladies and gentlemen now uh once you do your payoff table okay you may try to just uh you know so that the examiners would actually see it easily you can just give it some borders okay you can give it some borders so that uh, it looks like a table for sure okay it looks like a table it's easily it can be easily identified all right and this pair of table just have to bolden it so that the examiners will also see it clearly okay you might want to shade it for them to actually see that that's a pair of table all right then uh now the decision now decision Okay, um, what was the question? Let us go back to the question. Prepare a pair of table for different possible outcomes for each decision option. Okay, fine, that's fine. Uh, we've done the preparation. However, the examiners might actually say, tell us how, uh, I mean, what decision can you give uh, forth to the board of managers or board of directors? So you just have to say, something like this all right a the highest the highest uh 
um, contribution. The highest contribution. Remember, we are talking of total contribution. All right, and also the contribution per unit. All right, the highest contribution uh, based on the most likely on the most likely sales volume. The highest um, total contribution based on the most likely sales volume. Okay, if you are looking at the most likely sales volume, the most likely, remember this one. Okay, uh, let me try to share them again. That's for you to see. Those are the most likely, right? And we can also continue with the shading so that uh, we are on the same page, All right? Most likely, uh, sales volume uh, would be mm, Would be uh, at the price of at the price of four dollar thirty. Okay. The highest price, the highest total contribution based on the cost of the most likely sales volume would be at uh, the price of $4.30. Uh, Why are we saying that? Okay. Why are we saying that? If you look at the most likely, okay, I, I could just, uh, as you can see here on the shaded uh, row, you can see that at four dollars. Remember, this is the four dollars. Let me again shade it for you, or just let me just change the the color of the four. You can see that's the price. These are the prices, right? These are the prices, ladies and gentlemen. Do not be confused all right so you can see that at the price of four dollars we were having total contribution for the most likely sales volume of twenty thousand and then for the four dollar thirty the the most uh likely contribution was twenty thousand seven hundred and fifty while it's for the at four dollars forty uh the most likely uh was 20,800 okay so one could argue and say uh, given given uh, given this analysis the highest contribution is actually at oh, that's four dollars forty sorry okay just a typo okay that's Four dollars forty. Okay, because that's where we are having the highest. All right, as you can see there, the, the highest is twenty eight thousand. Okay, I've shared it in yellow. Okay, and then um, we can pro we can then argue and say, but. Does it matter? You can see that at four dollars thirty, the most likely sales volume is 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 just as good as you can see. It's just as good. It's twenty thousand seven hundred and fifty. So you can argue your case and say, however, a sales price, a 
a sales price of $4.30 is just as good as it leads to an almost similar total contribution. Okay. All right. Now, this could be the argument which you can put across. However, I said contribution is contribution towards covering fixed costs. So let us put fixed costs into perspective. Okay. Now, if we factor in fixed costs, the fixed costs according to our, to our uh, info, I mean, question here, the fixed costs were uh, 20,000. Okay, we're having fixed costs of 20,000, ladies and gentlemen, which we need to pay off uh, whether we make a profit or not. So, uh, given the fact that uh, resources are scarce and we should be utilized. Uh, in the highest possible, uh, I mean, in the highest possible uh, uh, way, okay, we just have to ensure that the, we save or we make, we, I mean, we save the cost or we, uh, we do an operation that is going to ensure we cover them, all right? Remember, fixed costs are a must, and there is no way we can avoid them. So, our decisions should be, uh, I mean, focused in ensuring that we undertake an activity that is going to ensure we have uh, settled our fixed cost burden as profitable as possible. So, uh, if we factor in these uh fixed cost of twenty thousand there is a price at which we are guaranteed that all the fixed costs would be catered for okay remember our fixed costs are twenty thousand so let's say because we have seen okay on the face of it we have seen that um at four at four dollars forty we were actually guaranteed that the most likely, okay, sales, uh, uh, the most likely beta sales were at were were giving us a contribution of twenty thousand eight hundred, and uh, by that comparison, we were actually attracted to the price of four dollars forty. But we can go a step further and incorporate fixed costs. You can see that at the price of four forty. There is a danger that if the sales uh, did not perform the way we expect and they become in the worst possible category or they rest in the worst possible category, then it means that we are not going to meet our fixed cost because we are only going to earn a contribution of 14,400 as I have indicated uh, there. Okay. That's a contribution of uh, 14,400. I hope you have seen that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I hope you are seeing it clearly. Okay. So, at this uh, point, it means that the contribution, the total contribution is lower than the fixed cost. Therefore, we are operating in a loss. Okay. So, uh, the waste outcome when things get worse we are not going to be able to meet our fixed costs we will end up uh, running an overdraft we do not want such a situation so you can see that uh, at the price of 40 i mean of four dollars we are guaranteed in all circumstances okay in all cases or in all circumstances that we are going to cover the fixed costs as you can see in the worst possible category we are achieving a contribution of 20,000 which means we are simply breaking even okay 
there is a break even uh, opportunity there all right we are not going to result in a loss so the the price let me just write it down however let me say b however however at the price of four dollars per unit we are guaranteed that there won't be any loss as the worst possible outcome okay the worst possible outcome would uh, bring us to a break even opportunity where there would be no loss or gain which is a better of position So given the choices there, you can see that uh, at price of $4, we are in a better of position. Okay, let's judgment there. I hope we are done. Now, let us try to get into a more mature position and look at this particular example. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, just take a look, just, just go through this example. I give you just two minutes, and then we proceed. You can pause the video, just pause the video and read the question. Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us read the question. Magnum is a factory capacity of 1,200 units per month. Units cost him $6 each to make at his normal selling price is $11 each. However, the demand per month is uncertain and is as follows. So we have got the information for the demand. Um, and the probability okay so this simply means that uh, at 400 units all right we have I mean the, there is a, a, a probability that uh, 400 units there is a 20 uh, percent probability that 400 units could be demanded at the price of 11 dollars per unit okay so at the 11 dollars per unit all right uh there is a 20 percent chance that 400 units would be sold okay but there is also a 30 percent chance that we are going to sell 500 units 40 percent chance that we 700 units would be sold or a 10 percent chance that at that price we will sell 900 units okay now a customer has approached this guy okay for a fixed contract fixed quantity contract so when a contract comes fixed or i mean when this uh, the quantities are now fixed then we are hundred percent certain that we are going to make or to sell our commodities all right so uh in this case this there is certainty there is certainty all right we are faced with two situations where there is a fixed sale that is guaranteed you are going to sell 
uh, because you've been approached by a customer but there's a price to pay right the price to pay there is that we are no longer going to sell the goods at eleven dollars but we are going to sell them at nine dollars per unit okay so in our first situation um in our first situation ladies and gentlemen uh, let me just try to okay the first situation here that is uh normal demand the normal demand situation normal demand we were selling the items at eleven dollars okay but these items cost us six dollars to manufacture so the contribution was eleven minus six which was let me just say the profit outright okay the profit outright was actually going to be uh five dollars per unit but with the customer with this particular contract the profit is going to be because we are now selling at nine dollars but the costs are still the same six dollars so our profit is only three dollars with this particular customer all right um this company okay the magnum company or mr Mag magnum okay can vary production levels during the month up to the maximum capacity but cannot carry forward any unsold units in inventory okay so we are having a do or die situation because we are not allowed to continue with items into the next accounting period so we have to calculate all possible profits that we can get or that could result in each of these situations all right so once again we're going to come up with some profit table okay and then we have to to calculate some expected value all right and do some max min computation max max and minimax regret computation lastly we we'll then have to talk something about uh the perfect information okay the, because remember one of our objective was to determine the value of perfect and imperfect uh information okay but for that i think i'll i'll just ask you to consider uh another example different from this one okay so that uh i mean which is a bit clearer for your understanding all right for your understanding all right and then we'll come back to uh revisit this one as we wind up everything okay so for now we just have to concentrate on part a okay part a is only about the profit table which we can originate from the information there and then we then have to do our expected value the ev value computation max mean max max and so forth but before we actually delve into the uh number crunching business let us just try to uh understand what we mean by max mean max max and minimax regret okay i think uh if we do that we would be ahead of others okay would be would have gone a mile so um let us do it gentlemen let us just do it okay we are, are, are bravos we are brave all right <laughs> the bravados okay so now what is uh max mean max mean simply means that we have to maximize on the minimum possible outcome all right so uh this type of investor is uh some some form of a risk avoider right a risk 
uh, a, a risk averse investor who just want to maximize on the minimum uh, possible outcome. All right. Uh, for example, in our um, pay off table, okay. Let me let me just take you back a bit. All right. When the risk averse investor looks at that table, you would say, uh, of the worst possible outcome, he would actually pick uh, the price of four dollars. Why? Because it actually guarantees him that uh, what if the the situation comes to the worst, okay? If the worst comes to the worst. He is going to be assured of his twenty thousand contribution, and he will be able to cover the the um, the the fixed costs which is which are facing him. Okay. All right. So that's the um, max mean idea. Okay. That's the max mean idea. All right. So. Let us illustrate this with this example. Okay, then we have got um, the max max. All right, max max is uh, actually an idea for those guys who are risk takers or risk seekers. All right, they just want to maximize on the maximum possible outcome. All right, they have the mentality of maximizing. On the best possible outcome. So, if we look at the best possible outcomes here, you can see that the max max, the max max entrepreneur or max max investor would actually go for the price of four thirty. He would say four thirty is my best because when when good things come, okay, when opportunities favorable opportunities come. We are likely to maximize at that price. All right. So that's the idea, ladies and gentlemen. That's the idea. So, um, I think we have then the the minimax regret situation. The minimax regret situation is uh, the idea of capitalizing on the uh, is, is, a, is another form of a risk office investor but who capitalizes on on the uh, opportunity loss okay he is worried of the opportunity loss so the opportunity loss is his basis for decision making okay um all right we'll, we'll actually explain this as we do uh the example here all right uh so that we understand what we mean by the opportunity loss all right Okay, you, you know the concept of opportunity cost is almost just the same uh, here, all right? It's just uh, yeah, the same but a bit modified. So we we'll, we we'll try to illustrate what this concept is all about. So just hang on, just hang on as we do as we take a step by step approach. Okay, as we take a step by step approach. So once again, let us try to create our table. Okay, let us try to create our table. Let's get to our Excel. All right, uh, here we have used this sheet. So let us have another sheet number two. And we're gonna say Magnum. Okay, in the exam, we just have to indicate the question number. Right, do not make that blunder of failing to put the 
question number there and i do not want any of my students to just fail because they didn't indicate the question number that's that would be a waste mistake okay um so that's magnum and uh, we then have to create uh part a Okay, here we are we, we are required to come up with a pay payoff table. That shows all the profits that could be made. Okay, or profit table. You can just say payoff or profit table. Let's try to use uh, the profit table this time. Profit table. Okay. Now, uh, we have got uh, two issues to be covered. Okay, we have got uh, the issue to do with the contract size, uh, and the issue to do with the uncertainty attached to the demand. Okay. So we're gonna say, all right. Contract, contract, uh, contract size. All right. Contract size. Okay. And uh, we then have to also worry about the demand all right so uh, let me just try column here all right Data. Okay, and we just have to talk of the demand as it relates to our information. Okay, um, the demand. Trying to design this table. Okay, let me just say here demand. Right, and demand is likely to occupy about four columns. Okay, one, two. Three, four. Fine. Let me just try to merge this cell so that it looks like just one. Yes. Demand. Okay. And we have agreed that this demand is a normal demand which is uncertain. All right. The demand is normal, it's uncertain. Okay. Normal. Or uncertain demand we have got a contract size which is certain we are guaranteed that once we have entered in, in this particular contract we hope that this customer is going to honor his words and he's going to take our goods so all right so we have got how many demands uh, I mean how many levels do we have for this particular demand uh, we are told that uh, we have got a situation where we have got 400, 500, 700, and 900 uh, quantities. So those are units, gentlemen. So we have got the first one is 400 followed by 500. So we are talking of 400, 400 units. 
500 units. Okay, but uh, we want to use this figure. So if we put the U there, we are going to have a problem. Okay, so it is actually advisable to um, okay we have to create actually we have to create a space where we would be using the same information um, for workings all right so for now just bear with me ladies and gentlemen all right so we've got 700 units again means we have to also write this information somewhere you might want to use it so let me just indicate this part as workings so that my examiners will see what i am doing right so we have got 400 let me just write here and say demand demand we've got 400 Got 500, got 700, and 900. And this demands for my examiners again so that they will see what's going on. I've indicated that it is units. I need those figures and I need them in that format, in that formatting. So let me just put them there so that as i as i will be proceeding with my computation i'll be using them all right that's the benefit of excel all right so this is the um other um, decision i mean these are the decision choices which we have but let us talk i mean these are the circumstances but let us now talk of the decision choices all right from the definition all right so these are uncertain so these are the circumstances okay which are clogged with uncertainties all right and then we've got the decision uh, choices or options which we have the contract sizes which the customer might actually vie for all right from the information the customer is ready to enter into a contract for 300, 500, 700, and 800, as you can see here. Okay, this is the information we are talking about. These are the figures we are talking about. Okay, 300, 500, 700, 800. So we come to our Excel document and say, contract size, where are you? And the contract size says, I am here, please use me. Okay. So we are talking of again 300 units, 500 units, talking of uh, 700 units, and 800 units. Okay, that's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, we then have to feed in the information which we want okay you could also argue and say for the contract size why can't we have the same portion here okay so we can leave some space a bit and say contract size contract size okay units contract size is also in units where we have uh, 300 500 700 and uh, 800 okay done we're gonna say also that uh, contributions Per unit contributions contribution per unit normal demands normal 
demand. We said uh, this was, uh, you still remember this was equal sign uh, 11 minus 6, okay, which was 5. Okay, the examiners will be able, when they click, they will see that there is a formula there and they will know where the figures were coming from. And then contribution, okay, contribution this time, this is contract, okay, this is contract. The contribution for contract, ladies and gentlemen, we saw that we are now selling the commodities at $9 minus the cost of producing and we are talking of uh three dollars so, so the contribution there but i'm using the word contribution just for our understanding so that we won't confuse one another but it was also going to be uh, good because the examiner is not did not tell us what type of costs were they okay he just says say cost so um, to be just safe, you've got to edit this and just say the profit. Because if they are just silent costs, we, 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 we simply conclude that this could be all the costs uh, combined, the variable and fixed cost. So you've got to say profit, a unit. Okay, and here again, you just have to uh, edit it and say profit. Once you have done that, ladies and gentlemen, you, you have seen that the con I mean the, the profit in both situations, all right, the uncertain, uncertain situation and the certain situation. You then have to come up now with uh, the profit uh, at each level. So, for example, for uh, the contract size, all right, given the, I mean, plus the uncertain demand the contract demand vis-a-vis -vis -vis the uncertain demand we are going to say is to say at 300 units okay if we sell 300 units and at the same time manage to sell 400 units or from normal customers we sell 300 units to this particular customer and then 400 units from our other customers we should get something right so uh, if we sell from the customer 300 units, okay, we sell from the customer, we are going to get equal sign, okay, we are going to get uh, we are going to get, did I just say, um, 300, okay, we are going to say 300, multiply by the contribution from this customer, this one. Okay. Um, plus, plus um, 400 units from normal customers. Okay, 400 units from normal customers. Multiply by the profit from these normal customers. We are going to get 2.9. Are we together, ladies and gentlemen? We have combined. We come, we, we come here again. All right. We do the same thing. Okay, equals sign five hundred multiply by the contribution to the customer plus the units. I mean, um. 500 again
not 500, 400. Okay, multiply by the contribution. Okay, the contribution. The I mean the profit from the normal demand of this much. We get our three point five. All right. We are still at the uh, same column, the four hundred. Remember, so. At 700, okay. If we sell this customer 700 items, we are going to have uh, this much, okay. Multiply by, we no longer want to type anything, multiply by the contribution from the customer plus uh, the quantity, okay. We are selling to, but remember, there is a formatting there. Okay, so we are not going to use this. Uh, we're not going to use this uh, part. We're going to use this one. Okay, we are no longer want to type anything except the operations. Okay, and we expect to get that profit, and we get this much. We do the same. Okay. The reason why we are not dragging the formulas is because these data sets are not uh, related. Okay, so uh, we can't have a singular formula which could be dragged uh, outright. Okay, because each situation is actually different. Okay. Um, We have got uh, the 800 units now, the contract size 800, multiply by the um, this, sorry, uh, made a blunder there, okay, I'm saying the contract size, multiply by the Profit, the contract, okay. Uh, profit per unit plus uh, the 400 items, okay. Multiply by uh, the profit per, per unit in normal demand, get that much. Okay, okay, I guess you guys are following and um, I'm going to pause the video so that I complete the table as quickly as possible. Okay, for the 500, I just want you to look to see it, uh, I mean, to look at this for the last time. For that column, we're going to say uh, the, the, the quantities we are selling to the customer is to the 300. Because the 300 is still in the same line there, okay, and um, we are still go we are still selling the 300, okay, units, uh, multiplied by the uh, profit from the from each unit sold to the customer, and then we have to add uh, the uh, units sold on normal demand 500, and we multiply by the profit. The normal demand profit of five, and we have to get our uh, total profit of three thousand four hundred. Okay, um, like I have indicated, the data sets so far are not related, which means you can't drag and create a formula and try to paste it to every uh, detail. You get a zero. All right. Uh, this is a, it's not an issue of formatting actually, but it's an issue of uh, uh, the, the data sets uh, are new in each category. Yeah, you just have to input the data, all right? Just have to input the data unless um, when we need uh, 
um, maybe those uh, uh, coding uh, skills uh, which are a bit sophisticated. However, for the purpose of our exam, we need not to in, uh, invent things in the exam room. Okay, so um, it is better to go uh, to get it uh, gradually and get your answer. So you just need to be led by the principle. You have to be led by the principle. So at this uh, level, uh, I mean, here we are selling the 500 units to a customer. So that's 500 um, by the profit of the customer. All right. So that's what we are going to do. That's 500 multiplied by the profit of the customer. Uh, plus uh, the the units you are selling here, you are selling 500 units uh, and um, getting a profit of 5. So that's 5 multiplied by uh, 5. 500 multiplied by 5 and we must get 4,000. Okay. Um, we do uh, we do it again and we get uh, this time we are selling 700 units to the customer so that's 700 okay multiply by the profit of this customer all right plus uh, the 500 units which are being sold to the other customers at a profit of 500 and we should get our amount there now ladies and gentlemen this is our table okay we have completed uh, the table pay of table so uh, let me just try to uh, uh, avoid in this okay you can just say it much and uh, can also try to make this visible okay you can also say that the contract size and you just try to bolden the contract size okay that's the information ladies and gentlemen for our corruption you can also try to highlight this part uh, so that uh, the figures okay uh, as usual you can also format this to be dollars because we know this information is the information for our sales I mean our profits okay uh, once we do that we then have to start to answer I mean uh, the part B this is our profit table ladies and gentlemen you can also get a bit pedantic and try to bolden okay we have already formatted for borders that's okay that's the information there so you then have to proceed to part B for part B, we can need some space. I think so. Let us try to squeeze it here. Part B, part B1. Okay, expected values. Expected values. Okay, expected values, ladies and gentlemen. We are also going to be guided by the contract size so this information we just have to uh, copy it and paste it here all right um, we can just do this and our contract size is here okay then we have to calculate uh, the expected value in each contract size given the uh, looming situation but we know that uh, expected value is actually the the outcome uh, multiplied by 
the probability or the circumstance applied by the probability okay so it's a, it's like we are waiting up thing it's a waiting so uh, let us let's try to have the information for our probabilities probability because the the probability is give uh, a move in line with uh, the demand okay they detect the demand the first probability was 0 0.2 for the 400 you still remember okay it's here the information is here these were the probabilities ladies and gentlemen these are our probabilities that's the information for our probability so for the 400 we have got uh 20 percent so there's 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent and one so let us try to squeeze that information here we've got 0 0.2 0 0.4 uh, 0 0.5 0 0.4 0 0.3 let me see 0 0.3 0 0.4 right, 0 0.3 0 0.4 and 0 0.1 so you know probabilities they add up to one okay or 200 percent fine once we have done that we then have to um, come here right um, Let's have to come here, right uh, here. Just here, should have taken those figures. Should have taken these ones. All right. Because don't want those ones, but these ones. Okay. So we have to say here contact size. Fine. So uh, for the 300 units, uh, our expected values. We are going to say uh, equal sign, okay? Equal sign, and we have okay. So that's we open our bracket there, and then we start to input the data. Remember, uh, at uh, 300 units, okay, we had these uh, results. Okay, let me just try to. Let us just do away with this one for now. Okay, these were the results we are talking about at 300. Okay, those were the results. So let us work with those results. Okay, so for a 300 is equal to right um, this information multiplied by the probability. For the 400 units, okay, because it is relating to the 400 units, so the probability of 400 units was 20%. Uh, Are we together? We then say add, okay, we say add uh, this uh, outcome or this profit multiplied by the relevant probability, which was this one plus this outcome multiplied by the relevant probability of 700 units which was this one plus this profit multiplied by the relevant probability we close our bracket get this the, the sum that's 3.9 Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have input our first formula there, and you can see that hey, to to repeat again the same formula, uh, it's coming um, laborious. So uh, there should be some way of us doing it better and easier. So let us try to drag this. Uh, uh, the corner of this cell to see what is going to happen. Wow, nothing has happened. Why? Because of what is called uh, relative referencing. Okay, there should be some fixed uh, information uh, which 
for, for us to be able to drag the formula okay so so, so that we have some other uh, expected values for these uh, contracts so uh, in that situation because here we are being affected by uh, relative referencing we need to have what is called absolute referencing so uh, we just have to click our formula here and we, I mean we go to this uh, bar here the formula bar and we just have to you know the information which we do not want to change is not these the figures in the in the uh, pay the payoff table or profit table no these figures are going to change per each contract but the probabilities according to the demand the normal demand they don't change so these should be fixed these should be fixed uh, figures okay how do we make them fixed so that uh, in, in our formula they do not change all right we do what is called uh absolute referencing so we click our figure and the the, the formula is popped up in the formula bar and then we just have to ensure that uh we slot in a dollar sign between uh the cell i mean the cell uh letter and figure so here we have log uh cell k7 this is this is k7 why is it called k7 because the column to which it relates is k and the row to which it relates is 7 we go again to l7 and we put a dollar okay so l7 is this one we go again to m7 we put a dollar sign and then n7 we put a dollar sign okay still the figure doesn't change okay the formula i mean the figure here is still 3.9 but when we drag it should give us something wow we've done it these are our expected values so you need to practice this just have to replay this part of the video to ensure when it comes to expected value remember just have to put the EV here expected value is shortened by EV so that's how we should have done it okay once again let's just try to fold this so that they look a bit clearer okay they should be a bit clear okay and we can also format them to be uh especially the ev the ev is left uh justified it should be uh sender justified for it to be yeah, a bit set even the figures we can format them to be sender justified here so that they are on the middle of the cells good we've done it they now look they are, they're now looking a bit presentable not stylish but at least presentable we need to show these examiners that we are employable because we remember as part of the slabbers we should be able to work out things using um, digital means and data analytics tools and this is part of it now let us go to the um, max mini the max mean technique as part of our decision making rule the max mean we talked about the max mean in our introductory part okay say this is a, a technique employed by a risk avoider okay max mini okay um max mean okay uh the max mean technique ladies and gentlemen i said this one i mean in this technique or with this technique the investor uh just want to maximize on the worst possible outcome okay you just 
uh, look for the better the, the the better position in uh, in those worst circumstances. So we just have to uh, get back to our payoff table, uh, but we can just try to just at least copy out this information. This information we are going to use it uh, throughout, ladies and gentlemen. So let's just just copy and paste it. Now I've pasted it. So, um, okay, I'm not happy with this contract size. The way it is looking, it's not pleasing. Okay, the way it is appearing, not yes, better now. It's time. good okay contract sizes then we we ask ourselves in each contract size what was the worst outcome you can see that uh, the worst outcome for contract size for 300 units the worst outcome was 2.9 okay and the worst outcome for uh, 500 unit contract the worst outcome as you can see here the the lowest was this one and for the 700 unit contract, the worst outcome was this one. For the 800 unit contract, the worst outcome was this one. So all these figures are actually worst outcomes. Okay, just have to copy and paste in the exam because you don't have time to waste. Just come here and you have to ensure that if you click this one, it is likely to appear in line with your other information and then um just say west outcome okay all right um i think i missed something on the expected values the decision rule uh you guys should have told me i wish you it was a live lecture where you could have told me that a there was something missed okay on our expected value here expected values we should have come up with a decision okay we should have come up with some decision so which value i mean which contract size is a, is applicable for decision obviously uh, the decision the EV EV decision enter into a contract with the highest EV okay the highest EV which is uh, which is uh, the eight hundred units, eight hundred units, the eight hundred units contract size. It gives us. This contract gives us $5,400 profit, okay? Profit. Okay, you may you might actually share it, share this portion. Might share it uh, so that the markers would easily see what you have been writing all along. Okay. Uh oh, what's going on?
what's going on. Uh oh, uh oh. Just use your back uh, arrow and try here, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, issue of shading is now giving me trouble. Okay, but uh, sure you have seen the decision. Okay, EV decision. Pick the contract. Take the contract giving you the highest, uh, the highest uh, profit. Okay, take the contract giving you the highest profit, and it is still continuing what is going on. Okay, so which means we just have to lock ourselves, right? Let, me, let us just lock the cells to ensure we can get whatever space we need. We need a space to make the comment, all right? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry for that. Uh, I think uh, we just have to find a way of inserting. Uh, comments okay let us just try to use this one wow my name has popped up it doesn't matter so okay uh, all right in the exam the feature could might not be there all right so you just have to type it you just have to create a line let me just try to uh, you just have to add you can add uh, a row okay and uh, this is how you're gonna add a row ladies and gentlemen you just have to insert and it has appeared a row has appeared you can add as many rows as you want okay okay just add as many rows as you want all right but we can also use this feature where we right we we click at a cell and right click okay you hit a cell and then you right click it and you just have to choose okay the insert comment and we gonna say we're gonna say uh uh expected value decision expected value uh decision okay i hope it is gonna allow us so many words all right the decision um enter into a contract and into a contract giving a higher profit and this is and this is the 800 units contract Okay. Um, now, when, when when the examiners want to see uh, what you have written, they simply just uh, click here and they see that you know you have, you have written something and uh, what you have written. They can then read it and see if you. Uh, Okay, we have to show the comment, right? And uh, the readers can just scroll up and down. Okay, they can just read everything. You can also hide this. Okay, it can be hidden. Um, you can just hide it. Okay, like that. It's fine. That's it, or you can just do as I've indicated. You can just create column, I mean the row, and then you type whatever decision you want to type there. 
then um, for the max mean, all right, we've done everything. We've determined the waste outcomes uh, for this rule or this technique. These are the waste outcomes, the waste outcome at each contract size, okay? So for the 300 unit contract, the waste outcome was 2.9 and, and so on and so on. All right, so we then have to say, of all these waste outcomes, which one is the better outcome? Obviously, you can see from this information, again, okay, that uh, the highest uh, the highest profit we can get under the waste situation is uh, the contract size of 800. So you say, uh, decision. enter into the contract size of 800 units which gives higher profits in the worst possible circumstances. So by so doing, you will be maximizing the minimum uh, profit available. All right, the max max. The max max uh, situation. Okay, what's going on with this? Right. Um, in the max 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 technique. So you can see that uh, we have moved a lot. Uh, I mean, a mile. We are somewhere there now. All right. Uh, the configuration of my numbers should tally. Okay. We are using Roman numerals. Not letters of the alphabet. Now, for the max max technique, here we just want to maximize whatever maximum benefit we can get. So, this is how we are going to proceed. So, once again, we take our, uh, we just copy and paste this information I've indicated already that we want to use this information. It's very important for us. So, just copy and paste it here. Alright, and we talk of this. Alright, it's only that the results are a bit uh, straightforward, where the lower values are actually yielding the lower profits, but uh, in the exam context, you might discover that these figures do not have that, uh, they do not follow that pattern. All right, um, just for illustration purposes, let me just try to bolden this contract size of mine. Good. And then the maximum outcome, okay, or the best outcome. Because the max max is for those who are risk risk seekers, so uh, they go for best outcomes. So the best outcome, a contract, if a contract or an, an 
each con the contract size. Okay, oh, my spelling from here. Now we have to ask ourselves. Uh, the first one was at 300. What was the best outcome at 300 unit contracts contract size? We were having this 5.4, and uh, for the 500 units that's 6,000. For the 700 units that's 6.6. .6, that's the best. But in the exam, it doesn't mean that the higher the figures, the better. Sometimes you discover that at 700, that's where you have the higher profit. Okay, this is just for illustration purposes. All right. So, uh, if the best outcome was at 700 or at 500 or even at 400 units, that's that's the figure you should have picked. In this case, all the figures are in the same column at the end here. That's where we are having our figures. So you just have to copy and paste them. All right. Copy them. Paste them at the right place here. All right. And just do this. We are done. This is the information which we need. We then have to use that information to get what we want. Okay, now we have got the best choices, the best outcomes. The decision rule is decision. The decision. Enter. Just have to enter into the contract that maximizes the benefit. Okay, that will maximize the benefit. Okay, in this case, uh, the contract that maximizes the benefit is the 800 units contract size as it gives the higher uh, benefit or profit. All right, then let us now do the final uh, straw that is the uh, minimax regret. Okay, um, this was. Number four, mini marks are great. Mini marks regret technique. This one, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, has to do with uh, the opportunity loss. All right, so. We just have to first come up with uh, the regret table. Okay, so we just use the same information which we used when we are uh, constructing um, when we are constructing the payoff table. All right, so we are going to use that same information to see if we can. Uh, come up with something tangible. All right, so that's what we are going to do, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so let us take this information and try to copy and paste it at a place below them. So this is our information. Ladies and gentlemen, let us try to paste it here. Good. I hope I did everything correct. All right.
good now uh, we don't have to say phi we have to look at uh, the highest possible outcome uh, based on uh, the normal or the uncertainty uncertain demand all right so um, if the demand is 400 units the maximum uh, we can get is actually the 400 okay or given the demand at 400 units and the customer purchasing 800 units we are going to get the highest possible outcome is 4,001 I mean 4,400 all right but what is I mean okay so we are happy all right if we sell if, if we sell uh, 800 units and uh, 400 units from the normal demand okay we are going to have the ultimate uh, profit I mean profit of 4,400 so in this particular situation if we if we sell things like that we are not going to to regret anything all right so in this in that case we are going to have a zero regret so it is actually wiser so that we use this table for reference we can also copy and paste a replica its replica here okay so that we work in this part in the second table in this one so you can see uh this is just for our reference we can we can as well share this okay that's for us to see what is going on so we are saying if we uh sell at 800 units given the demand the normal demand of 400 units we are going to get the maximum benefit so there is there is no regret here so the regret there is zero now what if we sell at 700 units given the demand of 400 units we are going to get 4.1 instead of getting the 4.4 when we sold at 800 units so there is an opportunity an opportunity loss okay we have lost 4000 minus 4.1 so in that case we have lost we have lost uh, 4000 okay minus 4.1 in that case we have lost 300 uh, dollars that's the opportunity loss the opportunity loss we were talking about then if we sold 500 units okay given the demand of 400 units we only we are only going to get 3.5 okay so 3.5 instead of 4.4 so we are going to lose how much we are going to lose okay um 4.4 minus 3.5 900 okay we then have to ask again at 300 units we are only uh, given the demand of 400 units there uh, we are going to get only 2.9 so how much are we losing from 4.4 when we sold 800 units so we're going to say 4.4 minus uh, 2.9 we're going to lose $1,500 okay so let me just complete uh, all the, the rest uh, we, are, we, are going, we are simply going to use the same method example uh, under the 500 units category okay you can see that uh, the maximum benefit uh, uh, in that column is at 4.9 okay so 
that square we have got zero regret there all right we've got zero regret there so uh we just use the same here that's um 4.9 minus 4.9 minus uh 4.6 we get a 300 here 4.9 nine minus four thousand that's a nine hundred okay four point nine minus thousand that's a nine then here four point nine minus three point four That's a one thousand five hundred. Um, we get here again. Uh, this is uh the highest figure, so there is no regret there. Okay, and uh, as thought as there is no regret, the next uh at seven hundred we are going to lose five point nine minus um five point six. Okay, so that's a 300. Here, 5.9, I mean 5.9 minus 5,000, that's a uh, 900. Okay, uh, make it a habit that you put an equal sign that is going to, I mean, to be compatible with. Um, formulas if you craft them all right it's a good practice okay when you are entering data in excel okay 5.9 minus uh 4.4 5.9 minus 4.4 the one like i said uh these figures have uh uh, of this structure all right but it doesn't mean that in the exam things can get on a silver platter like this one okay uh we are, we are just doing using this figure for illustration purposes all right so um okay so in this case we are saying um as 6.9 is the largest one so that's the regret at that point is zero there's no regret but if we sell at 700 we are only going to get 6.6 .6. so the difference there that's a 300 difference here that's a 900 okay and here we are likely to get a 1.5 as usual. All right, now um, you can see here that, all right, as I have indicated, uh, the minimax regret simply means that you just have to minimize the maximum possible regret. Okay, we have to minimize the maximum possible regret. All right, so our regret table is shown as that these are the, uh, uh, I mean, this is the, the regret table, ladies and gentlemen, all right? This is the regret table we are talking about. The regret table is actually this one. All right, let me just try, let me just try to remove this one. We have used this one, we no longer need it, okay? don't need this one all right okay um fine this is the table which we want our examiners to see so we just have to 
gel this one only and uh, that's the regret box ladies and gentlemen now uh, it is advisable that whatever you do I mean you do not delete a table that um, from which you do not delete a table or a cell from which you have got uh, I mean yeah, one of your formulas is affected okay for example uh, if I had put some figures in uh, if I had taken some figures from that uh, table which I've just deleted I could have seen something like an REF okay REF something like that okay that will be showing me that I've removed uh, figures so it means that uh, the cell is no longer having uh, a linked cell okay it's no longer having information for some or it is relating to a cell that is no longer existing all right now what is the decision rule from all these okay we then have to do as we did before we just have to narrow down things okay we just have to copy and paste here and say uh, contract size come here okay so um, what is the uh, the maximum regret which we can get at each contract level you can see that the figures are just the same so uh, we can just uh, have to slot in right like I've indicated uh, this example has been uh, too linear such that uh, the higher the, 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 the quantity is sold the higher the profit and we are having a situation like this so in this situation what we simply have to say uh, is that obviously uh, there is a zero regret uh, if you sell uh, at 800 units at all demand levels and there is also 1500 to be obtained as um, I mean as the maximum regret if we sell 300 units you are going to lose a total of 1500 okay in all categories so you just have to slot in these figures right so these are the maximum regrets which can be experienced all right this here is it was 300 okay if you still remember it was 300 because we said uh, from this uh, table all right and we have deleted the table but can actually see it uh, from this where we said that uh, at 400 units the maximum uh, possible benefit we have is 4400 so there is a zero regret here and then um, if we sell 700 we will get 4.1 and so therefore the regret we have is at 4.4 minus 4.1 and we get our 300 so this is why we are saying there is a 300 uh, this point and the maximum regret we get at if we sell 800 in all of these categories is a zero so uh, by the end of the day uh, like we I have already pointed uh, the, the, the minimax regret investor would want to maximize I mean to minimize the maximum regret so the maximum regret from all these situations this contract size we can see that is a 300 so that's the maximum regret uh these guys would would care right so this means that this contract uh gives us uh more headache all right if we enter if we sell goods at 300 you i mean if we sell 300 units we are likely to get uh more headache all right but the objective is for us to minimize that headache all right so we'll go for a contract okay uh, that is going to give us the highest possible uh, I mean the, the lowest possible uh, 
opportunity loss. All right, so uh, this contract is actually the ATAR threat, as you can see, we are having um, from all the worst possible. These are worst outcomes, uh, remember, okay? These are actually um, the worst outcomes or the maximum regrets, maximum regret or maximum opportunity loss, so, maximum regret. So, uh, what we, so the decision here is that decision, go for a contract uh, that exposes you to minimum regret. In this case, this minimum or lowest regret, this is contract for 800 units. So you can see that throughout uh, the analysis, the 800 units has been very, very uh, good um, contract size. Okay, but in the exam, that's not always the case. The 800 units in this case is giving us a zero regret, which is the, 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 the minimum, all right? Um, a regret we can sustain. All right, uh, one might argue and say, uh, why can't we just say, we should have chosen a contract that, the, the 700 contract, because it is has, it's giving us a real figure of 300. Um, 300 is too large. Okay, remember this is another form of a risk avoider. He doesn't want any risk. He doesn't want risk. Uh, if if this eight hundred was let's say something two dollars, some two dollars there, then you could have uh, gone for that as well. The, you just want something the minimum possible. Uh, want to maximize for uh, I mean to minimize uh, the maximum regret. So um, the, from the maximum regrets that are available. The best option obviously would be the lowest number okay um, the lowest loss all right so the lowest loss is actually the zero there all right you can also as well format this uh, you now know how to do this formatting Okay, because these are in dollars, these figures are in dollars, so there could be the need to put them in dollars, right, as a way of format. It has been a very long uh, lecture, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, but um, we need to then cover uh, the last bit, the decision trees, so that we uh, call it a day, and those ones, I'm going to dedicate them in this last video in the next video because we can't continue the, the video length now too much uh, i hope you have benefited thank you very much uh see you in the next video so that we conclude our case nicely until we meet uh, once again let us call it a goodbye. So I just feel very, very excited as I'm um, logging out, ladies and gentlemen. And I do believe you have been assisted. Okay. You have been assisted. Okay. Bye-bye.